welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, today's film, if you haven't already guessed by the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it in the description box, uh, <laughs> I am using four new makeup items. Yay! Um, <clears throat> they are. Yes, it took me ages to work out how I was going to do this so that you could see everything and me hopefully not drop everything. Uh, they are a Revolution a Reloaded palette in a Deep Dive. Uh, they are the Ofra X Nikki Tutorials Highlighter in Space Baby. Uh, they are a Jeffrey's Magic Star Concealer in C3. And the Revolution Pomade in... Royal Purple. So, if you want to find out exactly how these items performed and what I think of them, my friend, you are in the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I've got a few things to test out. No doubt I would have shown you these in the intro already. However, I will now show you them in greater detail. Um, I don't know how many of you are OGs and have been with me for quite a while, but when Tarte did their Icy Betch preview, April Fool's thing in 2018, I messaged Adam Minto from Revolution and said, Go on then, boy, you make it. And he said, I will. And I'm like, fantastic. And I said on my channel then, because I was still under 100 subscribers then, I said, when I get to 100 subscribers, if Adam has done the Icy Betch palette, I'll buy two, one for me and one to give away. Now, I hit 100 and he still hadn't done it, and then 200 and 300 and 400 and he still hadn't done it. I've now finally hit 500. Fingers crossed I'm going to stay above it this time, because I, I hit 500, went to 501, then went back down to 499, then 500, and then 499, and then 500, 501, 499. I think I'm currently on 506 or 507, so fingers crossed I'm actually going to stay past the 500 point. However, they have now done their version or what I assume is their version of the Icy Betch palette, which they call Deep Dive. It's one of their, rev their reloaded palettes. I've got quite a few of these. And I actually really like the formulas on these palettes. I've got... Um, the Iconic was the first one I got, which was the dupe for Subculture. Hands down, still one of my favourite palettes. And these are like four quid, folks. Four quid. Um... The Velvet Rose one is, again, another one of my favourites. This is the dupe for Soft Glam. Um, a lot of the reloaded ones are dupes for higher end brands. And they've now come out with four new ones. One of which really reminds me of Blood Sugar. Hmm. But... You'll know how I've been going nuts for blue and green palettes. And uh, yes, I've got the Tarte Actual Icy Betch palette. I think that video is already up. Um, but I have now ordered this. Um, and if I like the quality, I'm going to order another one. And I'm going to put it in the giveaway. Because I've got quite a few bits that I've put aside now for that. Um, and that'll be a future video once you know the second one of these arrives. So obviously I'm using this on my eyes today. Um, I picked up one of their pigment pomades in purple because every so often I will put like a purple washout dye on my hair to cover the uh, stress highlights or the, the glitter hairs or at Christmas we call them tinsel hairs um, so I thought it would be interesting to have one just to sort of maybe try it in my brows I might try that today 
I don't have to go anywhere so if I do make a mess of it and look an absolute clown it won't matter um, but I'm also going to try this in my waterline to see how well it lasts and then y'all yeah, knew I was going to get this um, I got shade C3 uh, in the Magic Star Concealer and over Easter Beauty Bay had a lot of things half price and one of them was this now I like eye for highlights the first eye for highlight I bought was the Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut which looks like this and the second eye for a highlight that I bought was cloud number nine again a collab with Nikki Tutorials because I didn't have a pinky peach shifting highlighter at the time and that looks like that not as blinding as glazed donut but it can be built up so I thought they've got some highlights half price and I just so happened to have Melika Tutorials Space Baby Highlight and as this has got a blue shift to it and looks like that I thought this and this and this would actually work quite nicely together today so that's pretty much what's happening um, because I don't know how well this is going to perform my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed um, I've used my usual antiperspirant primer link to that details of that is in the uh, description box below um, on my eyes I have used my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot which I've not set because I know how shadows perform on that. Okay, I have done swatches of this. Obviously there's no names, they're just numbered like 1 to 15. So I'm going to put the swatches up on screen while I zoom you in and have a little bit of housekeeping chat with you. Right, my channel is aimed at all skill levels from complete beginners who've never picked up a brush before to absolute bloody experts and no I'm not claiming to be an expert um, I want everybody to be able to follow my tutorials and because of my chronic pain I can't always blend very quickly or for a very long time all in one go um, so you know if you find that I'm going too slowly for you there is a speed widget please use that please don't moan at me because I'm not going fast enough for you you know YouTube provide a speed widget please use it right hello now we're in tutorial mode today so when I look straight ahead you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner so I don't have hooded eyes if your static lid covers all or part of your mobile lid you have either a half or a full hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye now what I have is deep set eyes which a lot of people confuse with being hooded eyes because we suffer a lot of the same problems I'll show you what I mean. This is the eye I'm blinding so I can close this eye and still see what I'm doing. If I cover my mobile eyelid and then close that eye, you can see I've got as much eyelid again that tucks back in. And if I put it here and then close my eye, you can see I've got a little bit of eyelid there on the upper lid as well, which folds back in. So I completely understand the issues that people with hooded eyes have. I get transference of shades onto the upper eye. I can't just do a nice simple 
follow my eye socket to do a cut crease um, if I'm going to do um, something where I want the, the darker shade to show I can't just run it through my crease I have to come up above where my natural crease is as you can see if I sort of like hold that there and then you can see that's a good sort of three four mils above what my natural crease is so that that darkness still shows so when I do tutorials I try and do them in a way that hooded lid people can follow now um, all you need to do is with a flat top brush like this or a pencil brush or something and your eye open just sketch out where you would need your crease to be so imagine you can't see my, my mobile lid here you would then create a crease about here All right. So you're effectively creating a mobile uh, mobile lid on your static lid. And then the only other thing you need to do is whatever size brush I'm using, use a slightly smaller one. Because obviously you will have reduced the space between your crease and your brow. Enough wittering. It is time to add some colour. Now Blues, greens and purples are the hardest colours to create and that's what this palette is, is basically made up of. So I'm going to go in with this teal to start with and I'm going to use a Morphe M321. Um, as always with these there is a fair amount of kick up in the pan. That can focus, there we go. That doesn't worry me though because all I do is when I go back in to pick up more colour, I just pick up the kick up, it's really not an issue at all. I have my colour switch for tapping off into, but I find um, actually a clean washcloth is better for cleaning the brushes, um, because if you have a very very pigmented shade, like when I use blood sugar, I have to have a separate one of these, because I'll go in with another brush, and the pigment in the sort of waffly bit is so strong, it'll stain the brush. So. I actually prefer using a washcloth to change the colour on my brushes. So, I'm going to start off on the outer edge here and I'm just going to pat, because I've not set my eye base, I'm just tapping the colour on and lightly moving the brush around to tap that pigment out. I know I've got some on my lid, I'm really not worried. I'm probably going to end up cutting the crease today. Whether I'll use Jeffrey's one to do that, I don't know yet. But if that does bother you, you can just get a clean... And then just... This is dry, there's nothing on it. And then just very lightly dust the colour out. But as I said, I'm probably going to end up cutting my lid today. So I'm just literally tapping this into place. It's looking a little patchy. But then, Revolution don't tend to have very, very highly pigmented shadows. And they do that for a reason, I believe, because if you're a beginner, suddenly getting a huge amount of pigment can be very, very intimidating. Um, but the majority of their shadows can be built up. So, um, unless the shadow can't actually be built up, if they start off quite thin and, and almost like patchy, I don't tend to judge that until I've tried building it up and blending it. Um, in a lot of cases I, I believe that that's a deliberate choice by Revolution to make it easier for beginners so they're not frightened by colour I mean don't get me wrong there's some palettes of theirs that I really couldn't get on with but you know me you'll always get the truth right I'm just using the very tip of the bristles now just to slightly soften the edge there 
I'm going to be going over it with another colour in a minute anyway. Just want to sort of soften that edge a little bit. And I'm going to try buffing along. Yeah, there's a little bit of patchiness just here. Let's see if that will build back up again. If you do get somewhere that goes patchy when you blend it, just pat it back on and then yeah see that as soon as you start to blend just there I'm losing the pigment by the look of it so that's obviously an area that I'm going to need to just tap the pigment into place okay this is looking good so far. It's building up nicely. Teals are actually probably the most difficult colour to do because where they're a mix of the blue and the green, trying to get the shade absolutely bang on it is quite difficult. Um, my bridesmaid's dresses when I got married were teal. Um, and I literally, the, um, the room dresses, the room was all black and white, we had like black and white ostrich feathers on the table as the centres and chair covers were meant to be black but they bought white ones on the day which was a little bit annoying but you know if that's all that's going to go wrong on the day that's fine um, tables were white with a teal sash on them um, and I actually bought one of the teal sashes off of the, um, the room dresser took that with me when I was choosing bridesmaids dresses to make sure that the bridesmaids dresses absolutely matched because there are so many types of fabric that call themselves teal and some are more green, some are more blue and I wanted it to be absolutely bang on so and they were beautiful it was great because the whole room was black and white apart from these sashes of blue teal or you know sort of greeny blue teal and the bridesmaids came in and their dresses matched perfectly and my dress was this beautiful deep purple so yes I'm just going to take some of the pigment off of this brush just to soften that edge this side again I mean this is actually performing quite nicely I'm quite happy with it so far right I'm just going to take all of the teal off of this brush and I'm going to go in with the green that's above it, so shade 7 this one. And initially I'm going to overlap with the teal that I've already put on to tap this green across it. That's a beautiful shade. Really lovely. Now I do struggle on this top corner here and also here because of creasing to get pigments to stay so I normally have to work quite a bit in this corner. This is actually going on quite well. Oh, colour me surprised. And again overlapping the first shade and tapping it across please excuse my phone it is set to silent but it does vibrate like a washing machine on spin cycle so yeah so what do you think of all these blue and green palettes that are coming out at the moment? You know, you've got the, the Icy Betch, you've got um, Jeffrey's Blue Blood, uh, Certify Affinity 2, which I have got pre-ordered. That's I got the dispatch email for that, I think Easter Monday. So hopefully that will be with me in the next couple of days. Uh, this Deep Dive palette... You know, where I think purples were 
the colour from last year. I think this year we're going to see a lot of blues and greens, um, which I'm quite happy about because I love love those colour combinations and it's it's great to have loads of different price options as well because if you can't afford to get a Jeffrey or a Tarte or you know it, it's good I mean this this is like a four pound palette so you can create remarkably similar looks without the price tag because that's the thing about makeup until you once you've got it on your face unless you walk around telling people which palette you've used unless there is a unique shade in the palette and so far I've only got one of those and that's Re from the Hasina 2 palette um, unless it's a unique shade full stop that nobody has ever seen before in makeup then it's going to be pretty difficult. I mean, if you were to say, oh yes, I used the Icy Betch palette to do this look, or oh yes, I used a combination of, you know, Icy Betch and uh, Huda, Emerald Obsessions. You know, who can tell you you didn't? They can't. But once it's on your face, they don't know which palette you've used. So, you know, that's that's why I don't have an issue with dupe palettes. I take issue with fakes where they claim to be Tarte or Jeffrey or Too Faced or whomever. That I take issue with. But in terms of the same kind of colour theme but called something different, I don't have an issue with that at all. This. this is actually blending quite nicely together as well. I've gone up much higher than I usually do, but I was in one of those moods today. I just felt like it, you know. Well, let's face it, no makeup is wrong. If you like it, then who cares what anybody else thinks, to be quite honest. Unless you've written obscenities across your face in marker pen. Which I do not advise. Oh, that's not clever. Now, as usual, the eye that I'm blind in has got a lot more fallout. Because the ophthalmic hospital pulled this eye around a lot. That's why I've got these super deep creases here that I have to kind of stretch the lid out for to make sure I don't get any gaps in the pigment. Um, this is just a pad with sun and my cellar water on. But I'm going to just clean up in the corners. Now let me see. I'm going to grab a little brush. This is the 562 from Morphe. I'm not a Morphe shill, I just happen to really like these small brushes. And I think I'm going to go in with shadow number 15, which is this one here. It's got a slight satin to it. But because I'm using it with a blending brush, it means I'm going to get quite a bit of fallout. Um, well, it's weird. And when you look at it, you don't actually see the satin until you get it like that. Um, using a blending brush, obviously you're going to get more fallout than if you were just packing it on. But it also tends to um, get rid of a lot of the... Um, shimmer particles and leaves you with the colour, the base colour that's underneath it. Just cleaning that lid off a little bit just because it's probably going to be a bit confusing for you to look at when I'm putting this next one on. I'll just dry that lid off with the back of my thumb. There we go. Right, so I've picked some up on here. I'm just going to grab me a small mirror so I can see nice and close up what I'm doing. And initially I'm just going to tap this on the outer corner and start a very, very soft blend. And I mean very, very soft. I'm holding the brush right at the end and I'm putting barely any pressure on my lid at all. 
just to blend that out and I'm going to pick up a little bit more pigment and I'm just going to run it through my natural crease like so hmm. and then just soften that line by gently buffing all the way along. Sorry, hay fever. So I'm really gently softening the edge of that where it blends in with the teal. You can see what I mean about the fallout now, but I do my base afterwards anyway, so that's really not an issue. Um, if you don't, then I would suggest putting powder down to catch any fallout. This is actually blending really quite nicely. I'm just going to come into the inner corner a little bit as well, because I think I might do a halo eye today. So I'll just deepen up the inner corner slightly. Yes, I like that. I like that a lot. And now I'm going to do the same thing this side, but I can show you a bit easier because I can close this eye. So I'm just initially, literally just tapping that pigment onto the lid. <clears throat> this shade has got far less kick up in the pan because obviously it is a shimmer. I'm just going to start very lightly blending. Now you can see this does actually blend a little bit of that teal away just there. But as I said I do struggle with the outer edge of my crease and the outer edge of my brow because of creasing. But when we blend this colour up it should cover that and if not we can always add some more pigment in later like so. I'm really sorry if my white balance is going up and down. I actually film in my kitchen which is south facing. Um, so I use mainly natural daylight and then I have LED strip lights behind the camera. And the sun today is coming in and out from behind the cloud like nobody's business. So I would imagine that my white balance is absolutely all over the show. Certainly in my viewfinder it is, whether it is when I come to edit it, I don't know. Because I very often, I say stuff like that and then I come to edit it and there's absolutely no difference at all. So I, abs I look like an absolute nutcase, or a fruit and nutcase as my mum used to say. Everyone's a fruit and nutcase. Who's old enough from the UK to remember that advert? As I said, I always get more fallout on this side because the lid itself moves more because of the fact that it got pulled around so much. I'm just going to come back in with the M562 and just build up that little bit of teal that I lost just there. See? Fixed it. Okay. Time to cut the crease. Now I always use, um, these are actually nail brushes, acrylic nail brushes that I got from eBay. I got a set of about six of them for four quid. I use the 12 for applying and then the 10 for putting colour on afterwards. I believe the numbers are the millimetre width of the actual brush. But what I like about these is when you press them really tightly like that, look how thin it goes. That's absolutely perfect for doing um, cut creases. Now I'm going to use my shape tape because as I said I don't know how well the Magic Star Concealer works and I want to test the palette so I don't want any variables that could 
confuse things again I'm just gonna tidy up a little bit of that under there mainly because I know when I come to edit it's going to really annoy me now if you don't know what shape you need to do to cut your lid my way of doing things will be perfect for everybody regardless of whether you have hooded half hooded mono creased perfect 20 year old 40 year old 60 year old eyes this will work so pick up some of the concealer on this brush and then quite liberally apply it to the mobile part of your lid that you want to cut All right. then look forward blink a few times and you can see it's now transferred up onto your static lid so now you know exactly how far you need to cut the area so that it works And I very, very gently spread the concealer out and then I wipe it off on my washcloth with a clean brush, very lightly press over the whole area. And that picks up any excess concealer that would end up mixing in with your shadows and ruining the look. See how much that brought off? Again, I clean the brush instantly on the washcloth. And I do one eye at a time because I want it to remain sticky and then I get the number 10 which is stained from previous pigments that I've used and I'm going to go in initially with this shimmer here which is the number 8 I'm going to pack that onto this brush, as you can see. And then I'm just going to press it into the damp or sticky concealer. Like this. Now I've not wet the shadow because we don't want to dilute the concealer which means because the brush isn't wet I can go straight back into it and pick up more pigment for the outer edge And as I said, the beauty of these brushes is that you do have really, really good control because of how thin they are as to where you're placing your shadow. I'm just going to clean that brush. And 
and then I'm going to go in with this really beautiful silver shadow here as you can see I've only swatched that once it already looks like it's going to hard pan that is a problem that I have found with some of the revolution pans um, but it's easily fixed you just get a bit of sticky tape on it and lift up to, uh, although to be fair when I use them with a brush I don't tend to get that it's only when I swatch them or use my finger with them that I tend to get a hard pan so so I've now got the silver on the brush and I'm going to pop this in the middle like so and then I'm going to very very gently kind of smudge at the sides and sort of pull some of the blue onto the silver and some of the silver onto the blue so you get a nice gradient I like that and because we did the blink test when our eyebrows are relaxed you can't see any of it on the upper lid but likewise if you get transference onto the upper lid it doesn't matter because we've cut that area we intended to have colour in that area okay now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other eye so I can show you again so get your concealer this is the number 12 so I'm getting my concealer on my brush might be a little bit too much there, Angie. This is shade 8B Porcelain Beige, if you're wondering. And then quite liberally apply it to the area that we want to have a halo eye. Look forward and blink a few times. If you don't get enough of a transfer up, pop a little bit more on. Blink again. Boom. There's your transfer line. So again, we can just follow that along. Bring it down. I know cut creases and halo eyes sound really difficult but I promise you by doing them like this they're really not because you are using the shape of your eye to tell you where you need to cut the crease to so you can't get it wrong okay right so I've cleaned that brush off and I'm just going to put it back away before I do anything else and then I'm going back in with my number 10 and picking up that beautiful aqua shimmer to use on the outer edges of our halo eye. You don't have to do two different colours on the halo eye, you can just use one colour if you want. Um, I just think having the two colours with the lightest colour in the middle just really brings attention to the middle of your pupil, which makes people look into your eyes and it you know, if there are areas of your face that you're not completely 
you know, confident about. And by doing this, when they look at you, their eye naturally is drawn to this lightest point here. So they're going to look you in the eyes and they're going to talk to you rather than looking elsewhere at areas that perhaps you're not so confident about. You know, if you're not too sure whether you've used too much blush or you know, if you've got your highlight in the wrong place. And back into the silver. To add into the middle bit. I really can't recommend this type of brush more when it comes to doing this kind of work. And then again, very lightly buff over the edges. And then pull some of that blue across into the silver. See? And that, my dears, is the absolute foolproof, easy way to do a very effective halo eye. And people are going to think, wow, you must have spent hours getting that right. And when in actuality, you know yourself. When you've got the right tricks, it's actually quite an easy process. Okay. Um, I'm going to go off camera and do my foundation, etc. Um, if I decide I'm going to be brave enough to use that pomade on my brows, um, I'll do that on film. If not, if I come back with brown brows, you know I um, chickened out and I'm going to use it just in my waterline for today. Alright, so I will see you instantly. When you suddenly remember you have a new concealer and you should really be doing that on camera too. <coughs> right, as always I've uh, concealed and corrected with the peach from Revolution. And the foundation that I've used today is my L'Oreal 24 hour fresh wear in shade, where is the shade? 015 Porcelain. Okay. So, the concealer. That does feel like it's on there quite strong. Uh, if you open your concealers like this, you are going to stab yourself. It's quite sharp. Um, I tend to open mine like that, so that's not too much of a worry. We have a star here, and another one around here. The component is beautifully cut, beautiful, like crystally cutting at the bottom. Uh, I went for shade C3, which I hope you can see that, that's really, really tiny. I hope I put it up the right way, mightn't it? There we go, C3. So, no smell. And it's the similar sort of shape, you normally see this with lipsticks, because it holds quite a lot of product in that well. So, apparently you don't need to re-dip. So we shall see. I mean, I don't use as much concealer as most people do anyway, so... <clears throat> I usually tend to use one of these sort of brushes for blending my concealer out. I prefer that rather than a sponge. I find the sponge takes away too much of the coverage. So... Let's see how this does, shall we? It's certainly very, very creamy. I mean, that's blended out really nicely without any trouble at all. Not exactly what I would call full coverage, though. I do feel like I get higher coverage than this with the same or less product from my Too Faced um, 
the super can see, super coverage one. Uh, not the original born this way, the, the new one. Um, Tarte and also Revolution Conceal and Fine. I get as much if not more coverage with the same or slightly less product. That being said, this looks really lovely on the skin. Really lovely indeed. Right, let's see how it sets, shall we? Just going to pop her back into her box for a minute because she's pretty. Now I always use um, Coty Airspun Translucent Extra Coverage and I'm a klutz which is why I keep this on it because the one that I've got doesn't have its sifter on it anymore. I bought it off of a friend and she'd taken the sifter out. So um, The brush I use is actually a Morphe G38. I got it because that tailor um, I'm just tapping off. I'm aware that's annoying. That tailor always used to use this for setting hers and then Morphe stopped doing it. But it is by far the best brush that I've found for setting my concealer. It'll be interesting to see how crease proof this is because although he said he doesn't guarantee that it's crease proof because pretty much nothing is, let's be honest. Uh, you can't guarantee crease proof unless you're absolutely creaseless skin, which let's be honest, very few of us have. I use this brush to go over all of my creases and then I go in with a big fluffy brush for the rest of the face but you don't need to see that bit for the minute. Um, I know there was some hoo-ha over how much product you got. Uh, you get 3.4 mils or 0.115 fluid ounces. Tarte gives you Good Lord, I can't even read that. 10 mils. Uh, Revolution give you 4. So Jeffrey is, what do we say, 3.4. Revolution is 4. Tart is 10. Um, the big two faced one is 15. Did not realise it had that much in there. Um, the original Radiant Born This Way gives you, she said trying to find it, 7. L'Oreal Infallible, this is fast turning into one of my favourite favourite um, concealers gives you do you tell me how much you give me or do you not tell me how much you give me hmm oh it says it in really big letters there look 11 I'm looking for something tiny again it's huge uh, what do we got in other concealers Come on. Uh, Flower Beauty give you. Good lord, that's difficult to read. Five. Catrice Liquid Camouflage give you five. Oh, 
line. Everything's going all over the place. Uh, Wet n Wild Photo Focus give you 8.5. Maybelline Fit Me gives you 6.8. Maybelline uh, Age Rewind gives you 6.8. Revolution Pro gives you 8.5. Probably. And Colourpop give you uh, four. So his is the smallest by far. But that being said, um, his does include skincare ingredients, I believe. Yeah, helps actively help reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. So I would imagine that that is where um, some of the cost has gone because it does claim anti-aging properties. I don't know how well you can see that. So I'd imagine that's where some of the cost has gone with this. Right. Uh, I will pause you again and I will be back and you can see whether I've got purple or brown brows. Okay, clearly my brows are not done. This means I am braving purple brows. You watch hubby ring me now and say, fancy going to the pub tonight, love. <laughs> mm. So, you can see I have not even swatched this yet. I just think it will go so nicely. So, here goes. Give my brows a bit of a brush through. And let's see how this goes. It's quite a firm pomade. It's not too soft, that's good. But it does coat the brush. Oh lord, here we go. Oh gosh. Okay, yeah, this has pigment. Oh hoy, does this have pigment? Huh? I quite like it though. going to take kind of little upward feathery kind of strokes at the start of my brow. What do we think? Do we like? Do we not like? Do I look like a silly cow or can I get away with this? be honest. I quite like that. Let's pick up some more pigment for the other eye. And you watch me completely mess this one up. Everybody else ever have like one brow that goes perfect and one brow that just decides it's not going to play ball? I really, really regret plucking mine in the 90s. I had such beautiful bushy brows. I'd over plucked them and they've never really come back. Not as good as they were anyway. I do quite like this pomade. I 
design, this looks really nice. I'm shocked. Admittedly, it's looking a bit pink on me, but that's probably because it's right next to those greens. They do lots of colours of this as well, like yellow, blue, red, white, as well as the like normal colours. Ooh. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. Just cleaning my brush off. Ooh. Yeah, I went a bit ham with blush. I'm trying to... My um, first ever top blush that I bought exposed. I've had it about probably three years now. And it's gone a bit dry in that it really does not, when you swatch it, give you any colour. So what I've been doing is using an old spoolie and I'm kind of roughing the top up so I've got loose pigment so I can apply it as a loose blush because I'm going to try and see if I can use this up this year. I don't do project panning because I would get bored using the same thing all the time but I'm going to try and use that exposed blush as much as I can without forcing myself to use it every day. I really like those brows. Mm. Right, go in with a flat top brush. Um, I'm going to go in to, I think, this one here, shade number six. Oh, pardon me. Again, this has a lot of pick up and a tap off. And I'm going to run this close up under my lower lash line. I can't stop looking at my brows. <laughs> Oh, this is the side that I hate doing because I normally poke myself in the eye because I have no peripheral vision at all, obviously, being blind in it and not having contact lens in this eye because I'm doing powders and stuff. You find us quite a long way away. I'm kind of relying on muscle memory and uh, good fortune to not impale my eye with a uh, makeup brush doesn't always end up successful. <laughs> oh lord. Right, this is actually the brush that came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. Um, it's a nice flat top, but it's chunky. So it's great for really smudging out that lower lash line. And I'm going to go in with this one which is shade number three. Again, huge amount of kick up in that pan. That was just literally tap tap in the pan. So I'm going to smudge this along the lower lash line to soften that line, add a wee bit more colour. Pick up the kick up. And do the same thing this side. So who's been watching Game of Thrones then? When I'm filming this, we're on week two. We've just watched week two. I have my own thoughts about what's going to happen. But I won't say anything because... Spoilers! And also, by the time this goes up, it's probably going to be week maybe four. And I could end up looking like a complete and utter plonker with what I have suggested. Right, cleaning that brush off, and now it is time for the Nikki Tutorials Space Baby Highlight. This is a cheap brush I got off eBay years ago. I think it might actually have been a lip brush. 
So I'm going to pop some of Wow, okay. That's yes, hello. Hello pigment. Hello pigment, my old friend. You've come to dazzle me again. Ooh. Oh, how good does that look with those brows? <gasps> And then I'm going to do exactly the same around my inner corner, as always. Now what I do like to do, um, I have had requests to just do that and show you what it looks like just with those. Um, because with my eye shape I actually find it's more flattering to just come under that first edge there as well. Under the tear duct rather than just doing the inner corner and lightly blend it in with whatever colour I've you know, swept under the eye because for my eye shape oh, oh blooming hay fever I'm going to end up with no firm foundation on my nose by the end of the day look it's already starting to go this is what I hate about hay fever people tell me if you've got your septum pierced does it stop you doing that to your nose because if it does I might get mine done I've been tempted to get it done for quite a while, but it'll stop me, sort of, I think it's almost a nervous habit with me now, to be honest, rather than just itching. Right, I am going to pause you, no I'm not, I haven't done my waterline, have I? I was going to do waterline. I'm so used to not doing waterline, I completely forget when I'm going to do waterline. How many times can I say waterline in one sentence? I don't know. Shall we find out? Oh, goodness sake, woman, shut up. <sighs> right. Bent liner brush. This is, um, if you've watched my Which Brushes Do I Recommend, this is one of the ones from the um, AliExpress set that cost me like two and a half quid, I think. So I'm picking up some of the pomade on this, and oh, where's my close-up mirror? Let's see if we can pop some of this into the waterline. Again, I have absolutely no idea how long this will last, because normally my eyes hate anything in the waterline and end up crying it all away within a matter of, in some cases, minutes. But hopefully with this being a more gel-like consistency, being a pomade, hopefully it might last a little bit better. Although my eyes are starting to well up with tears already. What is this you're doing? What are you putting on your waterline, woman? You know we don't like it. Oh, that really ties in with the brows. Oh, 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 oh. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna sit here and make silly noises to myself while I put the rest of my highlight on and do some mascara and some lippy. And I will be back with my final thoughts on everything I've put on my face so far. I'll also try and do something with my hair which is just, it's having a day of itself today. I don't know what it's doing to be honest. Hmm. Right, see you right now. I am back. Right, you already know what the base products are because I told you. The only things I haven't told you are my mascara is the Catrice Glamandol Volume Waterproof Mascara. Absolute dupe for Benefit Bad Gal Bang but cheaper and waterproof. And the lippy is one of Jeffree Star's bullet lipsticks from his Holiday 2018 collection and it's Area 51 because I just felt like this needed something a bit... Mm. So, 
Well, what do I think of everything so far? Eyeshadow palette, the shades that I've used, I like. Um, there was a little bit of issue with uh, the teal when it came to blending and, and some of it blending away, but then when you just tapped more on, it built back up again fine, so there's that, as far as I'm concerned, that's absolutely fine. Um, the shimmers went on beautifully over the concealer and are not creping or flaking on me. Um, so far, I'm actually really quite impressed with that concealer because normally you will start, I will start to see it settling in some of my fine micro lines under my eyes, um, which it's not doing yet. How long it behaves that way, I'm not sure, but I will probably update you on Instagram because I want to get this off and edited so it can go up. Um, the pomade. I love my brows. I'm really loving this. Um, again, I don't know how long it's going to stay on my waterline. I'll probably update you that on Insta as well. The highlight is beautiful. Uh, and when you look forward, you don't get that sort of blue cast that you can get from some blue shadows or some blue highlighters. And then you turn your head and BAM! You get that shot of icy blue. Now I understand that's not going to be for everybody, but if you like that kind of thing, which I do, then I'm very happy that I've now got the complete set of all of the Nikki tutorials. Um, highlighters, that's the word my brain was groping for, thank you brain, word I'm remembering finally. Um, so yeah, so far, oh and the setting spray was, of course, Slay All Day in Watermelon, I'm really cracking through this one. Um, my code for Gerard is, as always, in my description box. If you want to use it, fantastic. If you don't want to use it, I really don't mind. Saves you 30%. I get a small commission. I do not get 30% in case you're wondering. Um, with all of my discount codes that I've got linked in the description box, I'm very, very clear as to which ones I earn commission from and which ones I don't. There's absolutely no pressure on you at all to use any of my codes. There are plenty of codes floating around for those companies. Um, but if you wish to use them, and even the ones that are non-affiliated, where I don't earn money, um, you are supporting me if you use them, because it shows the brand that people are watching my content and using my code. So, so far, uh, I'm really happy with everything I've put on my face today. can't stop looking at my brows. I really, really, really am liking this. So there will definitely be one of these in my 500 subscriber giveaway. Um, once that arrives, I will show you what's in the giveaway. I will tell you what the rules are on how to enter. It's going to be very simple. I'm not going to ask you to go back through the last 50 posts on Instagram and like and comment and share. It's not going to be that complicated. I'm not going to ask you for your firstborn child in order to enter my competition, okay? Because I hate competitions like that. I'm going to make it very, very simple. Uh, because I'm a very, very simple person at heart. <sighs> so, please, as always, do double check you are still subscribed mm -hmm. because... Yes, thank you. Do check you are subscribed because YouTube are unsubscribing people. Um, they are removing the notifications bell because I've had it happen to me. I've thought I haven't seen so and so's channel for quite a while, and I go and check, and I'm no longer subscribed to them. Or I think that's come up in my recommended films, but I didn't get an email about it. And then I go and check, and my notification bell has been turned off, or it's gone from all notifications to some notifications, which basically means no notifications. Um, I don't know what YouTube are playing at, they're really not helping small subscribers at all. Maybe that's their problem. Maybe they want to drive all of us smaller creators off the platform, I'm not sure. 
but um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you are still subscribed or if you're not subscribed I'd hope you'd like to. Right, now as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.